Good day, my wonderful students. I hope you are having a nice time out there. You are welcome to basic science class. And today, we want to continue from where we stopped from the last class. Compound formation. That's the formation of chemical compound. Remember our objective, that by the end of this lesson, you will be able to define a compound correctly. You will be able to write a chemical compound without mistake. But before I go on to that, I want to have a little recap of what we had last time. Because some of my wonderful students requested that I do that. From the assignment I gave you, I noticed that some of you were unable to draw the atomic structure correctly. So, I'll start by defining a chemical compound again. I said that a chemical compound is a substance that contains two or more elements chemically combined together. Let me write it on the board. Now, I know if I ask some people to define a compound, some may say it's a place where we live, where um, we stay, where our house, we have our house. Some may give different definition, but that will be wrong if we define a chemical compound that way. A chemical compound, I repeat, is a substance that is made of two or more elements that are chemically combined together. Want you to go with me? A chemical compound is a substance that contains two or more elements chemically combined together. I repeat it again. A chemical compound is a substance that contains two or more elements chemically combined together. So a chemical compound is not where you live. It's not that compound where you stay, where your father's house is. No, that's not a chemical compound. Is that okay? Okay. Now, when you look at the definition of this chemical compound, you notice that we mentioned elements. It said that it contains two or more elements. So we may say, what is an element? In your Genesis 1, I know I mentioned this element and I defined it. But just for us to refresh our memory, we will define it again. We said that an element is a substance which cannot be split. When I say split, it means to divide. Another word for split is to divide. So a, an element is a substance which cannot be split into simple units by any or any ordinary process. An element cannot be split. Just like you have an oxygen as an example of an element. You can split an oxygen into any other thing. So an element is a substance which cannot be split into simple units by any ordinary, any ordinary process. So formation of a chemical compound, we need to First of all, know how to get our valency. I remember in the last class, I defined a valency. 
I'll write it on the board again. Valency. And I said that a valency is the combining power of an element. That thing that helps an element to combine together to form a chemical compound is what we refer to as a valency. Valency is that electron that an element has that will enable it to combine with another element to form a chemical compound. So we'll say that a valence a valence electron is that electron that helps an element to combine to form a chemical compound. Okay. Write it on the board. Said a valency is the combining power of an element. So, for us to get the valency of these elements we mentioned earlier on in our last class, at least we mentioned the first 20 elements, and I still believe you remember it. If you have forgotten it, remember the song Hydrogen, Helium, Lithium, Beryllium, Boron. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, chlorine, sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, potassium, calcium. Those are the first 20 elements. So the first thing we will do to get the valency of all these elements we mentioned now is to know how to draw their structure. And I remember I told you to draw this structure is very simple. The only thing you need to note in drawing an atomic structure is one, that an atomic structure is just like a structural representation of your atomic number. It's just like a structural representation of your atomic number. And this structure is made up of one, a nucleus, two, the shell, and then the electron. One, the nucleus. Two, the shells. And then the electron. Now, the assignment I gave you, I said you should draw the atomic structure starting from magnesium down to calcium. Please, I, I wish David Ifen you should be paying attention to this class. And Peter, we go to Peter in just as one, should also pay clear attention to this, please. Okay. Now, in drawing this structure, I will repeat it again. You have the shell. This is the shell. Then you have the nucleus. The nucleus is inside the shell. The nucleus is located inside the shell. And I said that this nucleus contains both the proton and the, the neutron. Then you have the electrons on the shells. So in drawing this atomic structure, first, you must know the atomic number of each element. Remember I said that the atomic structure is just like the structural representation of these atomic numbers. For instance, that magnesium, I hope you know that Mg is magnesium from our last class, and then the atomic number for Mg is 12. Now, if I'm asked to draw the atomic structure, of Mg, which is magnesium, I'll quickly draw the shell and put my nucleus at the center. In our last class, I told you that the first shell is called K shell. I repeat, the first shell is K shell. And this K shell can only take maximum of two electrons. 
meaning that it cannot take more than two electrons. So you have 12 here. If I put two electrons here, you will notice that you will be left with 10 more electrons. So the next thing I will do is to draw the next shell. Let me draw the shells here. Maybe you have forgotten them. We have K shell, L shell, M shell, N shell, and so on. Now, I said that K shell can only take two electrons. L shell and others can take eight electrons. So, in drawing this structure now, I will put the electrons one, two. Magnesium has 12 as its atomic number. I've represented two and it's still remaining 10. What then, what do I do next? I will draw the next shell, which is L shell. Okay. So I will draw the L shell. And I told you that this L shell can Take up to eight electrons. Now, in filling this shell, we'll fill it singly. When I say singly, I mean filling it one, one. One, one. Now, after filling one, one, you can now start pairing. Pairing means putting it two, two. Now, seeing that L can take up to eight electrons, how then do we fill it singly? We we'll say 8 divided by 2, that's 4. So we can fill 4 first, then we'll now start pairing. Okay, so we have this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's count it together. 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Magnesium has twelve as its atomic number, but the structure we have here has ten electrons. In other words, we have not succeeded in drawing the structure of magnesium. So what do we do next? We'll draw the next shell, which is M shell. This is M shell, and this M shell will still take maximum of eight electrons. But now we are left with just two electrons for magnesium. So we are not going to say because it will take up to eight electrons, let's fill eight. No. You check the number of electrons remaining for the elements you are asked to draw. So from what we have here, which is 12, we have already drawn eight, uh, uh, sorry, 10. So we are left with two more electrons. So these two more electrons will go straight to M shell. 11, 12. Let's check. The first shell takes 1, 2. The second, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then the last has 1, 2. So if we add it together, we'll have 12 electrons which is the same thing as the atomic number of magnesium. So this is the structural representation of magnesium, which will refer to as the atomic structure. Okay, the next one after magnesium is aluminium. And draw it the same way. David, I hope you are getting it now. You draw the first one. Okay, one, two. Three, four, remember you feel singly. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen. This is aluminium. Aluminium has thirteen as its atomic number. The atomic structure must have the same number of atomic number. You don't overfill it. You don't say because this one will take it. 
Let me put eight. No, that would be wrong. Okay, and so on. Why I am taking much time to talk on this is one. If you learn how to draw the atomic structure, it will help you even to draw a periodic table. What do I mean by periodic table? A periodic table is just literally is a table representing the elements according to their atomic increasing atomic number. A periodic table is just literally a table that represents an element or the elements according to their increasing atomic number. Now, this periodic table has a group and the period. The period is horizontal while the group is vertical. You have the group vertical, then the period horizontal. So, if we know how to draw this atomic structure, we can easily draw our periodic table. That's one. If we know how to draw this atomic structure, we can easily write an electronic configuration. And then if we can draw this atomic structure, we can easily form a chemical compound. Because from this structure now, I can tell you the balance of these elements. So that's why I am putting in more effort to make sure you understand how to draw this atomic structure. Even when you get to your senior classes, you need to know how to draw this structure for you to even understand your periodic table. Okay. I want to believe you have understood it. So, David and Peter, I want you to try the remaining from 14 down to 20. Okay. So I will quickly go to what I want us to learn today, still on formation of chemical compound. Now today, from this atomic structure, we want to write out what we refer to as electronic configuration. Then we will write out the valency of all these first 20 elements. And then we will see if we can form some chemical compounds using them. I believe you have already drawn the structure, so I'll write just the symbols of these elements as I write them. As I write the symbols of these elements, I'll then, from that, those structures you drew, will bring out their electronic configuration. Is that okay? Okay. So the first element, I will just take the first ten. You have number one. Okay. Number one is hydrogen. And what's the symbol of hydrogen? H. That's correct. H. Now, from the structure you drew, you notice that the structure of hydrogen was just like this. And it has just one electron. It just has one electron. So, you just write out the electron. One. The next one, number two, you have helium. Helium is HE. And then the structure of helium is this way. One, two. What do we do? We'll write the two 
electrons. What are we writing out? The electrons in each shell. We'll count the number of electrons in each shell, then we'll write them out. That's what we'll call the electronic configuration. The other way we can write electronic configuration using SPDF orbital, but we are not going there. At this level, I want us to use this uh, pattern of electronic configuration so we can quickly get our valency from our chemical compounds. Okay. Then the next one, number three, hydrogen, helium. The next one will be what? Lithium. And lithium is written as L R. So how do we draw the structure? If you look into your notes, you notice that lithium is drawn this way. One, two, then you have another one, three. So what do we do? How do we write the electronic configuration of lithium? The first electron has how many? Sorry, the first shell has how many electrons? Two. One, two. You write it out. Two, that's for the first shell. Put comma. The second shell, how many electrons does it have? One. You write it out. So, lithium has two comma one as its electronic configuration. After lithium, what's the next element? Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium. Correct. So, what's the structure of beryllium? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we want to write out the electronic configuration. How do we do it? We write out the number of electrons in each shell. The first shell has two. We write it out. Comma. The second shell has how many? One, two. We write it out. So you have two, comma, two. The next one is boron. Boron, and what is the structure of boron? I have boron as one, two, three, four, five. The first shell has how many electrons? One, two. Write two, comma. The second shell has how many electrons? One, two, three. Write it out. Three. The number six. Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron. What's the next? The next? Carbon. And carbon is written. What's the symbol of carbon? Not CA. If you say CA, that will be wrong. CA is for calcium. If you say CL, CL will be wrong too. CL is for chlorine. Carbon is C. Carbon is what? C. The symbol for carbon is what? C. So we'll write the C for carbon. Now if we are to draw the structure, how do we draw it? What's the atomic number for carbon? Six. And the structure must have the same number represented in it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll write them out. The first shell has how many electrons? One, two. We'll write two. The second shell, one, two, three, four. Number seven. Number seven is what? Nitrogen. Number seven is nitrogen. Nitrogen has seven as its atomic number. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. So you have one, two for the first shell. Write two for the first shell. Then for the second shell, one, two, three, four, five. Next, eight. You have oxygen. Oxygen is written. Oh, the symbol for oxygen is what? Oh. And then what, what is the structure? The structure is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
So you have one, two electron in the first shell. Then you have one, two, three, four, five, six electrons in the outer shell. I hope you are following me. I said to write out these electronic configurations from the structures you have already drawn. You count the number of electrons in each of these shells. Then you write it out. Like, for instance, the last one we did now, which is oxygen. If you look at the structure, the first shell has two electrons. That's why you have two here. Then the second shell has six electrons. That's why you are having six here. Is that okay? Okay. Now, from what we have written, I want to believe that you can do the rest. Okay, at least let me do up to ten. Number nine, and then number ten. Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. What's the next one? Fluorine. Then, neon. Now, if we want to draw the structure of fluorine, seeing that it has nine as its atomic number, then if we want to draw it, the structure must have up to nine electrons. Let's count this and check if it's up to nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's remaining one, eight, nine. So the first shell has how many electrons? Two. First shell has two electrons, and then the last one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Last one has seven electrons. Then for neon, you have two comma eight. So all these things we have written out here is what we refer to as electronic configuration. Okay, now from this electronic configuration, I said we can as well get the valency of each element. How do we do that? Now, when we look at these elements and their atomic structures, you notice that the first shell, like I said before, will only take maximum of two electrons. So in hydrogen, it has just one. And it needs how many more electrons for it to be two? What do you add to this one to make it two? You notice you add one. That means hydrogen needs one more electron. Hydrogen needs one more electron for it to be complete. Remember I said that this case shell will attend what we call a duplex level whenever it is complete. A duplex level means that it has two electrons. Then this shell will attain what we call an octet level. Octet. Oc o -C -T. Octet. Duplet. A duplet level and octet level. Okay. Now, so for this first shell, which is K shell, to attain this octet level, which is to have two electrons, is either it will gain one electron from another element, or it will say, come, let's share our electrons. So, we are going straight to finding the valency of hydrogen. The first shell, K shell, has one electron. Has it attended a duplet level? No. I said duplet means that it has two electrons. It has two electrons. It is completely filled. Once it has two electrons, which is a K shell, once it has two electrons, we will say it is Completely filled. 
So this hydrogen needs just one more electron for it to be complete. So what do you think hydrogen will do? Hydrogen will go to another element that has extra one element and electron and say, come, let's combine together to form a chemical compound. So it's either hydrogen will give out this one electron or sometimes it will even collect from another element to form a duplet level. So that electron it's giving out or it's collecting is what we refer to as E valency. So you notice that hydrogen needs just one more electron for it to be complete. So the valency of hydrogen is one. The valency of hydrogen is one. Now when you look at helium, helium is drawn this way. You can see that this first shell is completely filled. In other words, helium does not even need any electron. It doesn't need any electron. Meaning that helium is very unreactive. What do I mean by that? That helium doesn't have any space for another element to combine with it to form a chemical compound. It doesn't have any space. Look at the structure, it's complete. Remember this K shell. And this case here can only take the maximum of how many electrons? Two electrons, that's correct. And then when you look at that, the structure of helium, how many electrons does it have? One, two. And since it has these two electrons, is there any space for another element to combine with it? No. And since there is no space for another element to combine with it, we say that it is all reactive. If we are to draw a periodic table, we notice that this helium will go to group O. Don't worry, I will teach you how to draw that periodic table. It will go to group O. Why? Because it's complete. The shell is completely filled. And because the shell is completely filled, there's no room for another element to come in. So we will now say that helium doesn't need any electron. We can say nil. It doesn't need it though. It's not giving anybody, it's not borrowing from anybody, it's not begging anybody. Okay, so we say it's nil. Is that okay? Okay. Then the second one, which is lithium, we'll draw the next structure. One. Now, when you look at this lithium, you have one electron in the last shell. How many electrons in the last shell? One. Now, what do we do? Remember that this shell, which is the last shell here, this shell is L shell, can take up to eight electrons for it to be completely filled. But this has just one. What do we do? Is it possible for this element, lithium, to form a chemical compound? Yes. It is possible because there are room for other elements to combine with it. But how which elements can combine with it? You notice that this lithium needs seven more electrons. How many more electrons? Seven. How do I know it's seven? Remember, we said that this L shell can take eight electrons. What we want to do is to make sure that the shell is completely Field. So, the number of electrons that will have this L shell to be completely filled is 7. We have 1 here. If you say 8 minus 1, you, you have 7. So, that means this L shell here needs 7 more electrons. So, do you think it will be possible for lithium to get 7 more electrons from another element? Or do you think it will be easier for lithium? To give this one electron a half to another element that has seven. Like when you look down here, you notice that fluorine has seven. Now, do you think fluorine will say, let me give you this seven so that you'll be complete? Or give me your one so I will be complete. What do you think will be easier? Which one will be easier? I think if I have seven biscuits and you have one, and our teacher said we should make it up to eight. I think it will be easier for you to give me your one 
for us to combine it together and make up eight biscuits. So it will be easier for this lithium to give out this one electron. So it will give it out. Is that okay? Now, when this lithium is giving out this electron, meaning that he has it, I am the owner, I am giving you, so it is a positive to lithium. But when I don't have it, I am going to someone to beg it, beg it, please give me now. I don't have it, it's not my own, it will be negative to me. I don't know if you are getting me. I said lithium has it and it's giving it out. So when you are the owner, you have it and you are giving it out. It's positive, it's plus to you. So lithium will have plus. And how many is it giving out? It's giving out one electron. So lithium will have plus one. We'll still come back to this plus. I'll still come back to this signs you are seeing here. I will tell you what these signs are. Okay. Now, the same with beryllium. Beryllium has two electrons. And it needs six more electrons for it to be complete. What then do we do? You notice that beryllium will easily give out two to another element that has up to six for it to be completely filled. So beryllium will still be plus two. Boron will still be plus three. Then when we come to carbon, what then do we do to carbon? Will carbon be plus or will it be minus? Now when you look at carbon, carbon has four electrons in its outermost shell, meaning that it needs four more electrons for it to be complete. Is that okay? Okay, then nitrogen has five electrons in its outer shell. Now, how many electrons does it need to be complete? You have five here. Five, six, seven, eight. That means it needs how many more electrons? Three more electrons for it to be complete. Now, do you think it will give out these five or it will get three from another element? I think it will be easier for it to borrow three from another element. And now, this is going to borrow. It's going to do beggy beggy now. If he's doing beggy beggy, what will happen? He doesn't have it. It becomes a minus to it. Is that okay? So if you have, it will go and beggy beggy. How many? Three. So it will be minus three. Because this one, you are getting it from another element. You are borrowing in chemistry, we will call it gain of electron. We are trying to gain electron from another element. Why this one, if it's in chemistry, we say we are losing electrons. Is that okay? Okay. Now, the next one, oxygen has six in its outermost shell. It will be easier for it to get two electrons from another element. So, if it's getting from another place, it will be negative. If you are giving, it will be what? Positive. Pay attention. I said, if you are begging, 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 begging from another element, it will be what? Negative. But if you are the one giving, you are the one giving, the good Samaritan, you are giving always, you will be positive. So this one now is going to beg two more electrons for it to be complete. So how many electrons is he begging? Two. So it will be minus two. Then the next one, fluorine, has seven, has seven electrons in its outer shell. So how many electrons more does it need? One more electron. It will be easier to get one more electron from another element to be complete. So it will be minus one. The last one has eight. This one is Oga. It's complete. Remember we said that L shell, takes maximum of how many electrons? Eight electrons. And since this one has eight electrons, it's complete. The shell is completely filled. So it doesn't need any other electron. Uh, there's no space for another electron to come in. So this element cannot combine with another element to form a chemical compound. So we also classify this as those elements that, that, that are 
highly unreactive. Like I said when I was um, talking about helium, if I'm to classify this element now, I'll take it to group O. Group O elements are elements that has completely filled shell. Their shells are completely filled. They don't need to react with another element. That's why we call them noble gases. You know how the nobles behave? They behave, ah, I don't need you. I can do it on my own. That's the way they behave. We don't need other elements to react with us. We can stay on our own. That's the noble gases. Sometimes we call it inner gases or rare gases. Okay. So this one you have meal. So all these numbers you are seeing here, all these numbers you are seeing here is what we refer to as the valency. This is the valence electron of the elements. These are the valence electrons of these elements. These are the valence electrons of these elements. Now this plus and minus sign you are seeing here is what we call the ion. Ion, they are the charges possessed by an element. Now, when you look at this, this one has plus, this one has minus, this one has plus. So, why are they different? Some of them are metal, while others are non-metal. In your Genesis 1, when I gave you the properties of uh, metals and non-metals, I told you that the metals, the metals are electropositive, meaning that they have positively charged electrons or they have positive charges. You can say they have positive ions. Why the non-metals are electronegatives? Meaning they have negative ions. So these ones you are seeing with minus, they are negative. They can be classified as the non-metals. Why the ones with positive ions are the metals? So we stopped at number 10. We can do from 11 to 20. Now I will hardly do that from 11 to 20. Then I will ask you to try it yourself. We stopped at number 10. The next one is number 11. And number 11 is what? Remind me which element is number 11. Sulfur, no. Sulfur is wrong. Which element? Sodium, correct. And what's the symbol for sodium? SO is wrong. Remember I told you that sodium has a Latin name. Yes, because it has a Latin name, the symbol is gotten from his Latin name. What's the Latin name again? Natrium, okay. So the symbol is Na from that natrium. You write, you have Na as the symbol of sodium, not SO. Is that okay? Okay, so sodium is Na. So what's the structure of sodium? Remember? Okay, let me just draw it again. Sodium. Now, how do we write out the electronic configuration? Yes. The first shell, uh -huh. the first shell has how many electrons? One, two. You write it out, that's correct. First shell, put comma. Yes, the next shell has how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's correct. Eight. And the next one has how many? Just one. So you have two eight one as the configuration, electronic configuration of sodium. After sodium, what's the next element? After sodium is magnesium. That's number twelve. Number thirteen is what? Aluminium. Let's write them out. Silicon. So do magnesium, aluminium, silicon. After silicon is what? 
after silicon is what? Some are saying sulfur, others are saying phosphorus. Which one comes first? If you have forgotten it, I want you to quickly sing that song again. Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon. What after silicon? Phosphorus, not sulfur. So you write phosphorus before sulfur, okay? Phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, potassium, calcium. Number 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Okay. The next one is magnesium, the structure of magnesium has two electrons in its outer shell. So let's write the electronic configuration. That shell has how many? Two. Correct. The second shell, eight. The next shell, two. After aluminium, after aluminium you have, sorry, after magnesium you have aluminium. What is the structure? Put three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So is 13. So this is correct for the structure. Is that okay? Okay. So let's write out the electronic configuration. How many electrons do you have in the first shell? Two. Let's write it here. Two. The second one is the last one. Three. Okay. The next one, silicon. After silicon, phosphorus. So let's deal with silicon. The first shell, follow me now. One, two. Don't forget, we are bringing out the electrons in each shell. The first shell has two. You write it out. Two. The second shell has eight. You write it out. Eight. Then the last shell has four. You write it out. Four. Then after silicon, you have phosphorus. Phosphorus still have two, eight, five. I want you to try the rest, but because I want to write out the valency, I want you to try it to make sure you try it at your own convenience. Okay? Most of the valency, let me just quickly do all of them. You can see it's now complete. So you have argon 2, 8, 8. Who oh, remind me what we said about this element that has complete shell? We said that they are what? They are highly unreactive. They are unreactive. They are noble gas. They behave like people that have it all. That's the way they behave. They don't react with other elements to form a chemical compound. Because there's no space for another element to combine with them. Okay. So since this shell is complete, we'll draw another shell. Okay, another shell. Then you have one here. Two, eight, eight, one. Two, eight, eight, two. Oh. Now, whenever you are writing this electronic configuration, I think I can clean this structure now. Now, whenever you are writing this electronic configuration, the number you have must be equal to the atomic number. 2 plus 8, 10. 10 plus 1, 11. 2 plus 8, 10. 10 plus 2, 4. So you, if you add all of them, you notice that it's equal to what? The atomic number. So you don't just have any other thing that is different from the atomic number. Okay, so we can now go straight to the balance. Remember what we said? That the, this shell will take how many electrons? Eight. It's only the first one that can take two electrons. So since this element needs how many more electrons to be complete? 
seven. So what do you think it will do? It will give out one electron for it to attain an octet level. It will just do what? Give out one electron. So if it's giving out, will it be plus or minus? Ah, you have forgotten it. I said if you are, if it is giving out, it will be plus. If it is giving out, it will be plus. But if it is baggy baggy, is collecting, is borrowing from another element, it will be what? Minus. Is that okay now? Okay. So this will be plus one. This one will give out, right? Yes. Because it needs six more electrons, it will be easier for it to give out two electrons. So it will be plus. This also will give out plus three. This one. Now, will it give out or give? This one sometimes behaves like a metal. Sometimes it behaves like a non-metal. So we call it metalloid. Why do we refer to it as a metalloid? Because sometimes it only behaves like metal. Sometimes it starts behaving like a non-metal. So, silicon is a metalloid. So, it sometimes it will give out, sometimes it will gain. So, you have four. Now, what of phosphorus? Phosphorus has five electrons in its outer shell. So, how many more electrons does it need? Three. If it needs three more electrons, will it give or will it collect? It will collect. Remember I said in chemistry, if, we are, if it is collecting electron, we say it is gaining electron. So if it is collecting, is beggy beggy acquire? Yes. So if it is beggy beggy, in how many electrons is it going to beg now? Three. So if it's begging three electrons, it will be minus the number of electrons is begging three. Okay. This one has six. How many is it going to beg? Two. So it will be minus the one you are begging. This one, minus one. And this one is a noble gas. I've said it before. It has complete shell. So it's nil. In a periodic table, it will be in group what? Group O. Group O. Group O, sometimes we can call it group 8. Okay? Now, this one has one electron in its outer shell. So what will happen to it? It will easily give it out. Plus 1, and this will it also give it out. Plus 2. So when you look at it, some of them has plus, some has minus. Remember I said all these plus and minus signs you are seeing, they are their ions. And in your JSS1, I taught you the properties of metals and the non-metals. And we said that the metals are electropositives, meaning that they have positively charged ions. Their ions are positive. So meaning that sodium is a metal. Magnesium is a metal. Aluminium is a metal. Is that okay? Now, after aluminium, um, silicon already I said, you can see plus or minus. It behaves sometimes like a metal, sometimes like a non-metal. So we call them metalloid. Those elements that behave sometimes like a metal, sometimes like a non-metal, are referred to as what? Metalloids. So silicon is an example of metalloid. So after silicon, you have Phosphorus. Phosphorus has minus. That means phosphorus is a non-metal. How do I know it's a non-metal? Because one of the properties of non-metal says that non-metals are electronegatives, meaning that they have negative ion. Okay. Negative is a non-metal. Negative is a non-metal. Then this one is orga. That's argon. It's organ now. You can see it. It's a noble gas. Okay. Then this another one is potassium. It's plus. Calcium is plus. Meaning that potassium and calcium, they are what? They are all metals. So these numbers here, one, two, three, four, three, two, one, one, two. Those are the balanced electrons. Those are what? The balanced electrons with this number any element can combine with another element to form a chemical compound but we don't just pick any element and start combining no we have procedures as a matter of fact we have two methods of combining them one we say 
electro valence method and the second one we have the covalent method so today we'll be talking about the electrovalence method, meaning metals combining with the non-metals. In electrovalence, there is what we call transfer of electrons. I have it. I am transferring it to you. I am giving you so that we'll combine together to form a chemical compound. For instance, you know sodium very well, right? You know common salt. Do you know common salt? What is the formula for common salt? Who knows? Sodium chloride. Now we can easily write sodium chloride using what we have on the board. Sodium has one as its balance. And chlorine has what? One as its balance. What do we do? Remember when you look at here, you see that this one is seven. This one is one. So this one will give this one to this for them to combine to be complete. So how do we do it? We now write it out. Sodium combining with chlorine to form sodium chloride. How do we form it? Remember, I said why we are learning this and we are getting this valency is for us to know the combining power. Something that will help these two elements to combine together to form a compound. Now sodium, what is the valence of sodium again? One, you will write it out. Sodium, your valence is one. Chlorine, the valency is what? One. Now look at how they will combine. Sodium will combine like this. It will take the valence of this and that will give us, please permit me to clean, clean here. That will give us sodium one. Then Go this way again. Take this. See this? Chlorine is taking the balance of sodium and it will be Cl1. Now, because we don't write one, so far is one, we will not write it. But if it is something like two, you will write it. So, you will have sodium chloride like this NaCl. NaCl. You can see now with this valence, we have combined these two elements to form a chemical compound. This is an example of a chemical compound. Remember in our definition, it said that a chemical compound is a substance that contains two or more elements. How many elements do you have here? Some of you may say four. No, it's not four. Remember that Na is for sodium, Cl is for chlorine. Okay, so you have sodium, one element, Chlorine, another element combined together to form this chemical compound. Is that okay? Let's try more. I believe we have copied this. I can clean the board. Now I want you to go with me. Let's try write. Let's try and write the uh, chemical. Compounds of um, sodium oxide, magnesium oxide, maybe aluminium chloride. Okay, let's say maybe number one, sodium oxide. Let's write them. Number two, aluminium chloride. Some of you may be asking, Auntie, why is it this, why is it that we are having height, height? Now, when these metals combine with the non-metals, the non-metals automatically, their ending change to height. Like chlorine will change to chloride. Oxygen will change to oxide. Nitrogen will change to nitride. Sulfur will change to sulfide. Is that okay? So let's try the structure of this. Now, what is the valence of sodium? That's right, solution. Let me write solution so you know that we are trying to solve it here. Well, sodium is Na, the symbol first, and the metals will come first, then the next one is oxygen, the non metal. What's the valence of sodium? From what we have done now, the valence 
Yes. One. Correct. What of oxygen? Two. That's correct. Now, what will happen? You see that sodium will take that of oxygen. It goes this way. And you have what? N A 2. And then oxygen. You take this. And you have what? O. Do we write one? No. I said we don't write one. If it is one, we will not write one. Okay? So, meaning that sodium oxide can be written as Na2O. This is a chemical compound. Is that okay? This is how we write the chemical compounds. Okay? Number two, which is aluminium chloride. I have my aluminium. This is number one. And this is number two. I have my aluminium. Then plus chlorine. What's the balance of al aluminium again? Aluminium is three. Then chlorine is one. Have you seen why I said that these valence are the combining power? With this valence, you can combine them. That's why we refer to them as the words combining power. First, the metal will go first. Okay, so we take the metal. And you have what? A, L. You don't write one. After metal, you have then the non-metal. You have C, L, 3. That's a aluminium chloride. That's a chemical formula for aluminium chloride. Is that okay? I want to believe that you understood this. You know how we got the valence? We said that valence is the combining power of an element. How do we get them? First of all, write out the electronic configuration. The electronic configuration has to do with the number of electrons in each shell of the atomic structure. So you write out the electronic configuration, then you check how many numbers of electrons does this particular element need for it to be complete. Then you write it out. That is what we will use to combine with another element. And that's what we refer to as the balance. Is that okay? So I'll give you an assignment believing that you understood this very well. Please make sure you do the assignment. I noticed that some of you don't do your assignment. Excel in GSS 1, I noticed that you've not submitted any assignment and some other students. Please make sure you do the assignment. If you do the assignment, it will help me know if you really understood the topic or not. Okay. So do this. One, write the chemical formula of the following. I'm going to write the symbol for you. Find out the symbol by yourself. I'm going to do the fifth one. Mm -hmm. 
the right chemical formula of the following compounds. One, sodium oxide. This oxide is the same thing as what? Oxygen. Remember I said when this non-metal combines with metal, their ending changes to ide. That's why you are seeing all of them with ide. Oxide is the same thing as oxygen. Chloride is the same thing as chlorine. Nitride is the same thing as nitrogen. Is that okay? Okay. So I said write the chemical formula of the following. Sodium oxide. Magnesium chloride. Aluminium nitride. Potassium chloride. And calcium oxide. From the example we ha I did, I believe you can do this. Please make sure you do the assignment. I'll be very happy if I notice that you all did the assignment. Stay safe and God bless you.